Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to the basement of Thomas Liquors once again. I'm Chip Walton. I'm here with... Fitty. So that must mean it's another episode of Chip and Fitty's Beer Reviews. Christmas edition. That's right. And instead of beers, this year we're going to slam this 10-pack of Fireball in the shape of a candy cane. Are you ah, ready? You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> no. This is the Christmas beer episode, and goodness knows there's more than we could ever ask for to choose from. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we chose three Christmas beers, winter seasonals, as it were, that kind of travel, I would say, the landscape or usage of spice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, winter warmers, that's kind of what defines them. Right. And uh, and you could be have a really, really spicy one. You could go crazy with it. Uh, I think uh, Anchor Christmas Ale is kind of the uh, quintessential super spiced Christmas beer that has been around forever. And uh, is this is one everyone knows it, but you also have ones that are very subtle, um, with no adjuncts. Some with some adjuncts, right. and some that are very clearly <laughs> <laughs> stuff going on. So we're doing Anderson Valley's Winter Solstice, which has no spicing. Uh, Revolution Brewing Fitzmas, which has just a little spicing. I call it Fitzmas. Oh, Fitzmas. Yes, I feel you. Yeah. And then uh, Bent Paddles Christmas Cookie. Christmas which Cookie. Has a lot of spice. It's appropriately named. <laughs> so let us begin uh, fairly, I would say, neutral. Mm -hmm. Winter Solstice Ale. Cheers, Anderson Cheers, Valley. Jim. Not a brewery we hear about a lot, but you have kind of a soft spot in your heart. I do. Uh, Anderson Valley was available in the market uh, back around circa the year 2000, um, when I was uh, pretty early in my uh, tenure here at Thomas. and. Uh, All Saints Distributing brought them in, and uh, they have some people have some memories of All Saints. Um, and Anderson Valley was one of the breweries that they brought in, and uh, jumped out. It didn't know anything about it, and uh, it was just great quality stuff. And uh, they have not been available until about two years ago. Mm. Uh, they were uh, away from the Minnesota market from about 2003 to about 2020. Or even 2021 so almost a 20 year layoff oh okay and so I, this is one i remember from my early days in the industry yeah. and uh and always, i've always liked it and when i saw it resurf I was like oh my god it was kind of <laughs> so much nostalgic for me and they're just calling it a winter warmer uh northern brewer hops chinook hops two row malt crystal malt munich oak flakes house yeast no spice yep but they specifically say it has a spicy profile and this must mm -hmm. be from those northern brewer chinook hops the yeast uh, yeah. there are ways to get spice into a beer without spice and they're kind sure. of doing that here right yeah this is a great example of that we've got mm -hmm. a traditional style popular around this time of year summit has a the winter the ale. winter a ale. lot of sure. people just do a winter winter ale yep. right mm -hmm. and how do you how do you place this in the the pyramid of holiday beers. You know, uh, the uh, in my opinion, by far the most approachable. It's it's a darker beer. You can see it's a gorgeous uh, deep copper color. Chip, yeah, give me give me a look. Uh, but super, you know, great color. It's a darker beer, full of flavored, but really really easy drinking. When I first had this 20 or so years ago, I got notes of like berry. And I don't know from back then if the recipe has changed, my guess in some way, shape, or form, it's been at least tweaked a little bit. Um, but I got a little bit of a fruit and a berry character. And when I had this 20 years ago, it was one of the favorite beers I had had up to that point in my life. I was just gung-ho about it. So when I saw the, the uh, winter solstice coming back, I was just freaked out. And now my palate's evolved and changed and has been yeah. exposed to so much more. And I, I still have appreciation for the beer. Would I say it's my favorite beer in the world? No, but uh, it's it's a cool cool beer. It's very well done, great complexity without having the adjuncts, and I think it fits well into the the winter ale category, despite not being spiced. Right. Beer number two, Fistmas or Fitzmits, if you're yeah. fitty. Yeah. Holiday ale from Revolution Brewing in Chicago. They call it a holiday red ale, steeped with ginger and orange peel. Features notes of fresh break bread, caramel, stone fruit. We're talking 6.5%, 31 IBU. So we're kind of getting in that Great Lakes Christmas ale, Northeast Ohio style holiday mm. ale, where they're <laughs> taking a good beer and just jazzing it up a little mm -hmm. with some. The funny thing is, when I had this at the Gnome for the first time, they didn't have much descriptor on it. I didn't even know. I thought it was just 
a red ale that happened to be out at the holidays, and yeah. I was there for it. I didn't yeah. even realize because I feel like the ginger and the um, orange peel just play with the spice, uh, with the yeah. hops. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was like, oh, someone's just putting out a badass hoppy red ale for Christmas. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> so, cheers. Yep. We're talking about cheers. spices now that kind of complement the existing beer. Sure. Yeah, like you said, it plays in with the hops. And you're the one who clued, this, clued me into this beer uh, weeks ago when it just came out and you had it. And uh, I love that when you first tasted this beer, that you didn't have any tasting notes. You didn't know no. what was put in there, what adjuncts were put in there. So you were going into it with, with your senses completely as a blank slate. Blank right. slate. And you clued me into that. Uh, what's in here is actually very subtle. Yes. You got to look for it, in which, which is absolutely fine. There, there are plenty of beers with overpowering adjuncts and spices. Right. Especially this time of year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, talk to me about the the range of beers you get pitched as a beer buyer around this time of year. It's uh, It does range from classic ones everyone expects every year. Well, like we featured... Uh, uh, Sierra Nevada celebration, mm -hmm. of absolutely see it coming. Yep. Summit Winter Ale, you got all the staples. What's well, okay? Yeah, those are, of course those are coming. But then a lot of kind of gimmicky beers, and I think this is the time of year when with these so much spice <laughs> beers that uh, they can really kind of go off the rails, uh, and, and you really have a continuum of just a solid, everyday, easy drinking, but. Fuller flavored beer, yeah, and then to to the other extreme where it's just you're getting some bizarre things going on, and and I think breweries and, and you're a brewer, it's this time to kind of have fun and throw yeah. things against the wall, and see what sticks. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know this is where you get your bourbon, chocolate, pecan, pie, imperial stouts. You sure do. Not in July. <laughs> Not in July. And so so for me, it's like if it's too out there, there's been some stuff where it's like. That just that just freaks me out. I know, and I just won't go there. Yeah. But and then again, sometimes people seek out things like this, which is definitely out there, um, and it's a really unique pro profile. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, but some people really like it, and they seek it out. Before we move on to that, I will just say, a uh, huge fan of India red ales, American red ales, oh, red ales you, even in general. Irish to that. But. Just a mm -hmm. nice hoppy red, um, and this, if you're a hop head, mm. I kind of said this about Sierra ne Nevada Celebration. Oh, Celebration, yeah. It was a winter warmer for hop heads. Oh, totally. I don't know why I do so many air quotes when I'm in your basement. No, but it's it's it, it's part of the, <laughs> the aura. Yeah. But if this is one that you can find in your area, I would definitely suggest mm -hmm. this to kind of break a little bit of that pattern of either overspiced or just giant malt bomb. Beers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fistmas, Revolution, shout out. The third beer, as Fitty just alluded to, is Christmas Cookie Cream Ale, Bent Paddle in Duluth, Minnesota, 5% ABV, 19 IBUs, two row, golden naked oats, flaked oats, acidulated malt. It's got some hops. It's got centennial hops. It's gotta have something in there. Dry English yeast, category specialty. It is a cream ale with right. vanilla, <clears throat> almond, and cardamom. And this is the first time I've had it. I just took one little <laughs> preview sip. It tastes like one of these Scandinavian cardamom buns mm -hmm. that you get from, like, I don't know, either a church basement or, like, a hipster bakery. Oh, we told you, yeah. worship, that's, that's, like, Magnus Nielsen. It's a, it's a hipster bakery <laughs> sort, of, sort of beverage. No, but it's also a classic <laughs> uh, holiday treat, for sure. Yeah, definitely. These definitely. ingredients. Mm -hmm. Cheers, mm -hmm. also. Cheers to that on beer number three. I mean, the nose is just soft. It mm -hmm. is literally creamy. They don't mm -hmm. note any, you know, naked oats and flaked oats. It's not like there's lactose. They still achieve this nice, creamy aroma, probably mm -hmm. from a combination of all three of those adjuncts. Vanilla, almond, I, I think almond, so, cardamom. yeah. Vanilla and almond I really get. And what it really reminds me of is, as a kid, uh, when mom would make Christmas cookies in the, uh, the little, those flat sugar cookies where you roll out the dough and you, you do the... Uh, yeah. The... the, the the cookie cutouts, cutter. the cookie cutter, the almond extract is so distinctive in the nose on this, and it just takes me back forty years. Remember, I'm forty-eight. <laughs> about when I was eight years old. Um, You're right. Totally, just really elicits that memory of of also to 
not only the cookies themselves, me in the kitchen stuff, but the season. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, this this smells like Christmas season. Mm-hmm. And and, it, and it's not subtle. It's really vivid in both the memory and, and the intensity on the nose. And we talked about how our first two were kind of amber, and a lot of holiday mm-hmm. beers lean that way. But this is a golden, you know, they call it a cream ale. Mm-hmm. It's golden. Uh, it kind of, like, wafts these aromas. There's not a lot of malt to kind of mm-hmm. mingle with. And I think, uh, once again, to revert back to a previous episode when we talked about the fresh hop beers, the lighter the malt bill and the, the grain bill there, mm-hmm. you really focus, the hops come to the fore. That, that's, that's the star of the show. Mm-hmm. Here the star of the show is the spices, those, those Christmas spices. And yeah, and all the vanilla and the cardamom and the, um, God, what else, and the almond. Uh, which it, it, it's all there and it's, and it's not subtle. But I think, yeah, if you had a darker, <laughs> maltier beer with more malt going on yeah. in, in the flavor profile, it's going to mask this. You know, the, these spices Burnt are meant to come Christmas before. cookie. Yeah, you right? <laughs> oh, it'll be coming. <laughs> oh, my God. If we can think of it, someone will make it. <laughs> the Forgotten Timer Burnt Christmas Cookie. Oh, I like that Ale. One. Oh, I like this. <laughs> God, we're on No, we'll something. just mark it as creme brulee and sell it as a limited edition. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> and... and um, these are, speaking of limited, yeah, beers like these, yeah, are going to have very limited. Um, no brewery wholesaler, retailer wants to hang on to this stuff for long, especially when things are Christmas and yep. in the industry. Yeah. Everyone knows if it, was Chris, if it says Christmas on the package, yeah. and it's a Christmas, you know, and stuff like that, you don't want to have a drop of it in your building as of December 26th. That's wild. And yeah. even winter. Like, people act like winter is over January 1st. If you live not where yet. we live, you're like, uh, no, that we is got a good, not we got true. a good four-ish months, three but Yeah, months. no, I'm sure. Yeah. These winter ales, we'd always want to move into either, like, whatever the spring seasonal is or my yeah. box, something. Yeah. People always want to be, like, a month and a half ahead mentally on what they're enjoying it's, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, a season, which is, mm-hmm. it's difficult to logistically manage. <laughs> yeah, sure. exactly. Well well in into it if a retailer and wholesales. And also too, you want you want to be before the season rather than after yeah. the season. You know, hedge your bets that way. Kinda of like uh kinda of like when the fall clothes come out and yeah. you know, spring it seems. It's it's that sort of business model. Yeah. Be be ahead of the season. And uh whether or not they, the weather is corresponding. You mentioned the smells and flavors of a holiday. I just wanted to real quick on this beer kind of like go down a little holiday memory lane. Like what are a Ooh. couple other things that just say holidays to you because of what you ate, drank, experienced mm-hmm. as a mm-hmm. as a kid or a grown ass man? That's a, well, that's a really good question. But yeah, I mean, the, the mom's Christmas cookies for sure. And you know, you have to, it's such a fun thing. The kids, you know, the food coloring is okay. We're gonna make green ones, and then the you know the different <laughs> cookie cutters. Um, so yeah, I mean that was a tradition for me and for so many people. My my girlfriend and her family still still do that. Yeah, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the flavors, the the ritual and stuff of the season. Um, what about on the savory side uh, of life? You know. Uh, <laughs> This that's it's funny you mention it because some second cousins hosted a massive, massive uh, Christmas party on Christmas Eve every year, and I mean there'd be 60, 80 people in their house at least. Fitz a palooza? It's kind of a Fitz a palooza, yeah. This is the German side, so they'd always have <laughs> the sliced. Ham. It was the same menu every year, and the sliced ham with the little buns, the uh, German potato salad. Uh, and then for dessert, they'd have uh, donuts that would cut in half, and of course, that was my favorite part. Um, but really, really distinctive memories of what that meal was, and it was generations that this party has been hosted. Man, yeah. that's cool. So it goes, goes by as decades. And uh, yeah, it's just like that, that menu that, that was every Christmas Eve. It's like mm. distinctive and just so comforting. It's like, oh. This is the Christmas I know. My mom made this money potato soup every Christmas Eve. Ooh. Sugar cookies, again, you know, group activity, all yeah, the food exactly. coloring. Yep. Uh, some of my aunts make goffs, where kind of a German Finnish influence. So goffs or um, Leibkuchen. My grandmother made uh, another Kuchen, not Leibkuchen. Leibkuchen? Oh, why am I blanking on this? Anyway, just like poppy seed, rolled bread, moan kuchen. Oh, so a lot of, of those yeah, things, yeah. like 
she would make dozen loaves, saran wrap, foil, yeah. freeze, send to Alabama. Send oh, to Florida, sure. Send yep. To, and yep. everybody had like a little slice of butter, microwave it for 10 seconds. That's, uh, I guess that's a like kind of her take Ooh. on the, uh, what's it, the, uh, the uh, what's the, the fruit bread? Just a... Uh, Fruitcake. Fruitcake. Yeah. Fruitcake. That's it. Which I love, fruitcake. which is crazy. That's another Never distinctive... toasted fruitcake? That's a... No. Pop that junk in a f- toaster, man. Yep. I can, like I can guarantee you someone's going to have fruitcake, fruitcake winter ale fruit next Fruitcake toast? Yeah. You know what would be insane? Fruitcake French toast. Oh, make the batter, the egg batter with the vanilla. <laughs> All right. So we're either going to make that meal or a beer influenced by... <laughs> Fruitcake French Toast next yeah. year. Wow. End of the year, we want to give you all a shout out. Thanks for watching Fitty and Chip's videos. Worked in with some Chop and Brew episodes. Thank you for letting me come on. Do we it all the we time. We weren't all I that, that chummy. I mean, we're homies. No, no, we're also just a great beer yeah, it's all just seller. On camera. So I hit this dude up. I was like, I think we could do some fun. I want to call them oh, reviews, yeah. just discussions. No, it's just, yeah. Compare, it's, contrast. You know, hang out and drink a beer. You're right. We're not rating anything. We're just. Hey, two guys just drinking beer, talking about it. Oh. <laughs> dun, dun, Cheers, dun, dun, brother! Dun. But now I'm gonna try to drink. I guess one at a time would be a, uh, the best way to do it. <laughs> All right. So let us know what kind of things you would like to see. Fiddy's got access to a whole amazing bottle shop upstairs. Mm-hmm. We've got some ideas going into the new year. But what would you like to hear about um, from a kind of beer style or trend all the way up to? What it's like to buy beer in the yeah. modern yeah, craft beer climate. There are no limits to what we can talk about. Shit, we were just doing wine a couple weeks ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Year. New Year. Happy holidays for all the holidays. And uh, make sure to remember to buy the beer. Be the cool person that brought the beer. Be the cool. the yes, exactly. <laughs> What'd you bring? Fruitcake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's from two years ago.